Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens of Once Upon a Game, and today we're going to go through a playthrough of Traveler, the customizable card game. Uh, this first episode will be uh, set up in probably the first turn, and then we'll uh, play it through to the completion of the first solo mission. So I'm going to get everything out, uh, explain a little bit about the game, and then get it set up. So we are going to be playing with the... Um, the Free Trader Beowulf um, uh, ship deck. And then we're going to also be uh, playing the first scenario. So I'm going to get that out first. So when you play, if you saw the unboxing, you'll see we've got, these are several uh, ship decks. I've taken, taken the insert out. Uh, so we've got a couple of different ship decks here. Um, I haven't opened these yet. The game, the two player, uh, starter set comes with two uh, ship decks. This is the scout deck, uh, which we've not have not opened yet. These are some extra cards. These are some extra cards that came in the expansion pack. And this does not come with the game. This is the, all the counters, and I made a uh, a box to hold them all. What a deck is is 81 cards, and those 81 cards are your ship card. And this gives its stats. Hold it, take a look at it here. So, uh, in the upper left corner, we've got its timing, um, and that's its basically its initiative. So, if you're playing a two-player game, uh, you would need to to consider the initiative, and the highest goes first. Um, the, the next number there is its warp. Uh, it's one, in which case, for every uh, coin. Uh, paid uh, or every uh, credit paid, uh, it can warp uh, one or jump to one jump uh, to a, to a uh, mission. So we'll show you that more later. Uh, the zeros are its base attack and defense. And then these are the capabilities of the ship. This icon here tells you it's a ship guard. And these here tell you its base capabilities, which means it gets a cargo and a cargo and or a cargo or passenger and we'll explain more about that later so uh, and then these numbers down here say it can have four crew and they can have one of each of the types of upgrades or one of this one of this two of this two of this i don't i didn't memorize what they were so anyway so you're gonna have a 81 cards so you're gonna have a ship card and then and then you're also gonna have a deck of 20 uh, contracts and then your deck is 60 cards and I'll explain those more in a minute so your contract cards and they're double-sided I mean not double-sided they should serve a double purpose so this one is a group package this side is your contract okay and then when it's played this way it's a complication so what's gonna happen is each contract can have up to a certain number of complications as noted here uh, if you decide to uh, abandon uh, working committing to this contract and you decide to abandon it you have to pay this much money in penalty or credits in penalty in addition uh, some of the contract um, some of the complications will add some of that too and if you complete it you get three victory points and the goal of the game is to get 20 victory points you do that by completing these missions now to complete a mission, this tells you what you have to have. This means you have to have two passenger capabilities in the same turn to knock that out. These are subcontracts. As you can, they're optional. And to do that, you have to have a communication skill at the um, learned level. And then that gets you an additional victory point. So you complete that first. You have to complete that. And then you can knock this guy out if you want to. And some may have more than one and you can complete them all. And then the complications are what get in the way of you preventing that. So if you had this one here as your, as your contract, right? And then this one here is your complication. Uh, to complete, to knock this out of the way, you have to get these out of the way before you can att attempt to complete that. So, and these will restock between each turn. We'll show you more of that. So anyway, this, this says you have to return a, uh, a character card that you control to the owner's hand. So you can return it to your hand, 
but that means it's not available for you to use. So anyway, so those are that's your mission deck or your adventure deck, I think they call it. Okay, so there's 20 of those. So you got 21 cards. And then you have a deck of 60 cards. And these are, this is your uh, captain's deck, okay? And with the captain's deck, you have all different kinds of cards. Now, this is a deck construction game, customizable card game. So normally deck construction is not one of my favorite mechanisms. These do come predefined as, uh, you know, a ship deck. Unfortunately, they are designed uh, to play two player. So there's a lot of cards in here that um, are geared toward two player, like harming another player. So for instance, in this card here, just to look at what you can do in the action phase is, um, well, there's a heroic card, but if the character that you play this on who has the medical skill has it at the trained level, then you can exhaust this card and you can restore three. So this helps you, but uh, you can restore three health to any combination of target um, uh, character cards. Um, so this one actually helps you, uh, but, but it, you don't get in this first solo scenario, you don't take any damage really, because there's no opponent. You're basically just trying to complete, complete enough missions before the time runs out or you go broke. So uh, let's see, we can find one here. Okay, all right, so here's one that allows you, again, with the, um, I don't have all these memorized, covert espionage. Uh, let's see, this one is called Underworld, right? So you play this on a character that has Underworld. Then the action phase, depending on what level, you can jettison a target uh, gear card. So you wouldn't want to do that to yourself. Most likely, you'd want to do that to your opponent. So this really doesn't serve much of a purpose in the solo game. So for the purpose of this game, we are going to go ahead and use it, uh, use this deck as is, but you definitely would want to probably go through. In fact, it probably makes it easier uh, as a solo player that you can go through and just remove all the ones that are targeted to other players and then put in more beneficial cards. So to build a 60 card deck, you have to have 60 cards and you can have no more than three of the same card. Uh, there is one more there is one more requirement here, a ship. So this is this card, this type here is a ship upgrade and it requires a tonnage of 100, of at least 100 for your ship. So the free trader has a 200 tonnage, so this would be playable. If this was 100 and this was 200, you might as well just eject this one. But like I said, this deck is geared for this ship. So all the cards aren't gonna have tonnage issues. But if you put in cards that uh, would require a higher tonnage, the ship you're playing them with, then you couldn't use that that card, and it would only be suitable for expenditure. So, let's look at a few more card types real quick. So we covered um, uh, ship upgrades, and each ship upgrade has a has a subtype here. You can see it in the light. It's got that little marker there. This is the subtype, and that corresponds to the types here. And then it tells you how many cards you can equip to the ship. So uh, just something to think about. All right. So these cards are um, uh, heroic. And let's see if we can find a character card here. We'll get one to one in a minute. I'm going to set those aside. Okay. So this is a, uh, uh, a gear card, right? And so, or a gadget, right? No, this is a gadget subtype. It's a gear card, gadget subtype. And these can be equipped onto uh, characters. And again, those are apply to characters. We've got to get to a character here. And here's one. Bring this guy up here. Jim Thorne. He's a pilot. Okay, so you see he's a character card. He's human. Uh, he, it's a pilot skill. Okay. Now, um, if you see him in a hexagon, that means they're trained. And if you see them in a circle, then that means they are, I believe, expert skill. So you can think of uh, a hexagon as being rough around the edges. That's one way to think about it. And an expert can use, can apply wherever it requires trained or expert 
and a train can only apply toward trained uh, when when using that skill token. And we'll cover those in a minute too. But these correspond, you'll get these in a certain phase of the turn, you'll get these and then you can spend them to defeat missions and things like that, that are contracts, fulfill contracts. A character can have um, these heroic actions played on them as long as they have their skill matches. So in this case, he doesn't have Underworld, so he would not be able to use the Lost and Found. He does not have Medical, so he would not be able to use the Medical either. So building your deck to make sure you have those is, you know, to match up is very important. Uh, and then as for gear, they can have gear assigned to them, and I believe they can only have one of each uh, gear subtype attached to them. So you can only have one gadget, and they have alterations, armors, uh, vehicles, and weapons that do get assigned to them as well. If you jettison a card, you remove it um, from the game, or discard it, because you don't go through, you go through your deck once. So that's the other thing about these cards, is they serve three purposes, right? You'll see they have this number here in the upper left corner. That is how much it costs to put them in play, and putting them in play means taking it from your hand and putting it in front of you to your tableau, all right? So you can, you have to spend that money. Well, where you get that money is down here. You have these credits. So you're gonna have seven cards in your hand throughout the game, uh, not throughout the game, excuse me, you're gonna have seven cards in your hand, uh, and then you're gonna play cards out. But you start your turn with seven cards. And you can spend cards, you're just basically getting rid of cards in your hand. So like if I had this card here and I didn't wanna use it to play for the event, or the action, then I would spend it for three money to pay to put him out for two. Okay, and then there's no change. It's, you gotta overpay. The other option is your draw pile. You can say, okay, I wanna pay him for two, but I don't have any cards in my hand I wanna get rid of. So you just start spending from your deck. You say, okay, that's one, and okay, that's one. So I've spent two and now I'm done. So the cards count for, they're either in play, they're money, or as being money, they're a timing mechanism. You have 60 cards. You can't have 59, you can't have 61. There's 60 cards to start the deck to start with, and that's your timer. So you are going to work your way through those, and um, uh, that's, you know, if you can't ever pay, for a, a cost, then you're considered bankrupt and you've lost the game immediately. So that's definitely one factor to consider. Uh, so you don't want to manage your deck and build up your 20 points. So, all right, so these purple cards are events. We'll cover these real quick. They're events, they can be played at any time. And they just give you this, these bonuses, right? This, thing, this would allow you to increase, increase your ship's um, initiative which again, you really wouldn't need in most cases in a solo game. Uh, now there may be some solo scenarios, I haven't looked at all of them completely to see, okay. The WAP Advisors event allows you to add a basic capability token to your pool. Capabilities come off your uh, ships and other cards and uh, skills come off your characters and some of their, their other cards. Um, I think that has covered all the, sh uh, the card types. So, oh no, and then you got Link. You've got Link cards here, and what they do is um, they give you different different benefits. And your card, they also have a subtype. Your ship can only have one of each subtype of Link in play, except our card, the Beowulf. We can control an additional of each subtype, so we could have up to two if we wanted to. All right, so we're gonna set this up and start a Zolo game. All right, so we do have the tokens. And like I said, this is just a box I made to go with these, to hold them all in because it gets easier to sort through them. And it's just one of my little modular trays, GMT compatible trays. This is a two module unit and it just holds all the tokens. These are for the capabilities. These are for the different skills. These are for piracy, which you won't use in this scenario. The hearts are little wound tokens, and the hull damage are those guys, little H's or I's or I-beams or whatever. Uh, these are your victory points. So I just made a little box to hold them in. Makes it easier to get to them when I need them. 
Okay, so the ship card stays out. And then your 60 card deck just gets shuffled together. I am a riffle shuffler without apology, and I'm not a sleever anymore. Do one more. Just to be sure. They shuffle really good. They're a nice thickness for shuffling. All right, so we're going to set that deck here. Remember, that's our timing. That's our timing mechanism. Okay, now for these, there's only 20 of them. So I like to do so I'll shuffle into three piles. And you'll see I'm adding one at, at double to the center pile. And I always grab these and stack them so that the center card, the one that was the last card, goes into the center. And I'll give it some kind of random cut. And then I'll do a double stack. And again, the center, the last card goes into the center. And go to cross stack. Okay. Initial setup. All right. Do, do, do. So ship goes into play. Normally with two players, you'd reveal your ships and then make decisions based on that. Uh, so we shuffle our captain's deck and draw a hand of seven cards. So we'll do that. And I'll just draw them here. One. Three, four, throw one on the floor, six, seven. Okay, so that's my, my hand. And then what we're going to do is, now normally with two players you would alternate, and you can play with more players with more cards, um, you would... There's four uh, contracts that are available at any one time. So in the solo game, in the two-player game, I would put out two contracts. The opponent would put out two contracts. And anybody can go for either one. It also then runs into a uh, weirdness of having to uh, uh, keep track of whose cards are which. So you'd obviously want to, you'd at that point, want to sleeve your decks and have, uh, have different backs on your, uh, on your sleeves. So, fortunately, with this whole game, it's not that big a deal. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put out uh, four contracts, and then we're going to immediately attach a complication to each one uh, without looking at it. Okay, so we'll draw, draw that first one there. All right, so we got witness relocation, and we've got bulk hauling. Bring those over. I'll bring these out of the way here, I think. And then I'm going to add this one here, which is scheduled shipment. And then Zodani Science Expedition. Okay, so uh, the next the next step is to add. Um, and I'm actually going to move these across the top. It doesn't matter what order they're in. Okay. We'll get those in there. And then we're going to add, without looking at it, one complication to each. So we won't see those until we commit to one. All right. Deck of seven cards, and we've got four um, contracts out there, each with one complication attached. And remember I said each uh, can have a maximum. So this one can have a max of one, max of two, max of two, max of two. This number up here is the distance that you have to travel to get there. So this is one, one, two, one. And what that means is for every uh, credit, like if I want to commit to one, then you basically have to uh, cover that with your per jump credit cost. So for one jump is one credit. Okay, so my speed is one. So I can move one for every one credit. So if I want to move to this guy, 
here, I have to pay two credits to get there. You know, take two turns, you, just have, to, you have to spend the, the money. Those others are all at ones. There are some that are three, there are some that are four. Uh, so you do get, you know, some distance in there. Now there's a slight difference in the, um, in the solo play in that uh, you set up everything in standard rules, right? But um, in the adventure phase, which we'll explain when it happens, um, normally um, with four of these, we would each look at, we would draw one of our uh, adventure cards, look at it, each player, and then ass assign it to one of them, one of the contracts. In the solo game, you don't have a player doing that. So what you do is you'll assign one of your complications by some rules to one of the um, uh, contracts, and then you'll draw one and look at it and choose where to put it. Okay, and uh, usually it's going to go to the one that has the most point value. So like this guy is worth four points. So you would normally, that would be the first priority is to put him on one of the fours. Uh, and then there's some uh, some other rules like if they're already maxed out, like if this one already had two, then this one would have, this one would get it, so on and so forth. So you're basically trying to build at it. So you're going to have a lot of complications just to get a hit in a turn. Now you can knock them out. You don't have to knock all of them out in one turn, but you will um, um, need to knock it. Mean, you'll need to, this will be down, needs to be down to no complications before you can take out that contract. So, um, there's no piracy option in solo because there's no other player to pirate, to, to be a pirate against or to, uh, to have that effect. So, uh, you basically just either have to be uncommitted, uh, which means you don't go after anything, uh, like there was nothing here you wanted, or you go after a contract. So you commit to a contract. Some of the other solo scenarios will have, uh, an opposition kind of player more than that. In this case, this is just a simple, get 20 points before, before, um, your deck runs out. So to set up, this is called scenario one, alone in the black. And we have four slots, each filled with a contract and a face down unrevealed objective or complication. Our objective is to reach 20 points before bankruptcy. There is no opposition if a mission is too easy. They offer these different challenges that you can get. Uh, you can increase your adventure deck to 25 or 30 cards using from another, from another deck. Um, no more than one copy of each adventure card. You just extra points. So and so, and then this gives you extra uh, bonus points. You can reduce the size of your captain's deck. So earlier when I said you must have not 40, you know, not 59, you can actually reduce the size of your deck too and make other alterations there. So the first phase normally is gonna be what's called the ready phase. And uh, we do not need to play that because it's the first turn. So the ready phase is where you when you exert cards, um, you would re, you know, refresh them, things like that. Um, so we're not going to need to do that in this turn. We are now in the adventure phase. Okay, we're going to add new complications to the adventures. So in this case, we have this one's worth four and requires two uh, uh, passengers and any two skill tokens to succeed, and you get four points. Right. This one needs three cargo tokens, and um, that's it to defeat it. So right now we have nothing. So later on we're going to earn from our ship cargo and then a cargo slash passenger. So we're probably better off going for this one right here. Okay, But we're not at that decision point yet. But the reason I was pointing that out is when we uh, place our activity. So for the complications in our solo round, we have to draw a adventure car without looking at it and place it face down using this, attach it to the uh, contract with the highest victory point total, unless it already has the max number. If all uh, have a number of uh, complications equal to this loss, then attach it with the next lowest total. You're basically working its way down. Okay, and then if they're all full, then you can you can basically remove a previous complication without looking at it. So you're basically swapping them out and keeping them rotating. 
So we have two here that is a four and a four. Well, I want to go for that one because I know I'm going to try for that one because I've got two cargo available. So I'm going to put, I get to choose. So I'm going to put it on this guy. Okay. So he's got two complications. So he's full, but now I've got to draw one and look at it. So I'm going to draw one here, look at it at the complication level. Letting things slide, return a, an upgrade you control to the owner's hand. Okay. So if you don't have that, if you can't do that, then you can't clear that. Right. So I'm going to take this and put it on something I don't care about. And I'm going to put it on this guy. This guy's already full. Right. This guy's already full. This guy's not, and I don't want to complicate that guy. So that one gets to be face up because I've already seen it. So I know that that's there. Okay. And that is the first adventure phase. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, we have to choose our activity. Okay. So one thing that seems to be lacking here, and I could probably use a token uh, from the from the game box, but is is a way to indicate what you're what you're going after. Um, you could, in theory, I guess, bring it down to you, but in a two-player game, you could both be going after the same uh, contract. So you can't have that. So I just take a wooden disc and I put it on the one I'm going to go for. So I've decided I'm going to commit to this guy, bulk calling, and it's going to cost me, uh, it's one distance. So I have to pay my distance, basically this distance divided by my per jump distance means I have to pay one. So I have a decision here. I want to spend something to get it. Okay. Now you attack and defense are not useless in the solo game because some of these may have ships that you have to attack, uh, virtual ships. So I'm gonna hang on to that for now. I definitely want that one. In fact, I want that one now, I think. Um, so like the body pistol here, I can inflict a wound on a target uh, uh, character, which I don't have any target character that I want to wound, but attaching this to a character uh, gains him uh, the combat skill. So I may hang on to that because some of these may need a combat skill. Uh, okay, well that one's, that one's a waste. So I'm gonna hold on to that because it's worth three money. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to pay for that one by drawing a card. From the deck. And I pay that. It's a one. Fortunately, I'm losing that character, which I probably would have wanted. But the one has paid for my movement. All right, so the next phase is the procurement phase. Now, normally you would do victory checks through all these stages and things like that. But with the solo game, you're only getting victory points by closing these out. Uh, you might get some from some other cards if you built your deck differently. So, procurement. Here's what I want to do. So the BWAP advisors um, is an action. And you can play this at any time, so I don't have to play this right now. It's going to cost me two to play it. It's going to give me the capability token. So that means I'd be able to conquer, I'd be able to conquer this thing. Because I would have, I could get three cargoes. Because I get, I get a cargo, a cargo slash passenger. All right, so, but I don't have to play that now because it's an event. It can be played at any time. Pay the cost, get the benefit. So we'll hold on to that for a minute. I think what I want to do is get this character in play. The good thing is if you have characters that you can play, uh, you, get them out of your, you can get them out of your hand, and then you are able to uh, um, cycle through your cards a little bit better, quicker. So uh, I'm going to play him. Right. And we keep him over a little bit. So I gotta pay two for him. And I think I will spend this card. Looks like Pierce Brosnan. Uh, I will spend this card for two. So I'll discard that there. And that pays the two cost. And then I want to. Let's see. I want to play the body pistol on him. So what he gets is uh, his benefit, he's medical, and his benefit is he gets to heal all uh, wounds for a target character, but it's not gonna not gonna matter in the solo game. In fact, I haven't even mentioned that the, you know, he has 
he has three wounds. All characters have a wound count, right? But I don't really care because I'm not going to take any wounds. But I like him getting that extra skill, okay? So to play that is two. And I'm going to... I am going to go ahead and spend this time as money. Well, then with what is time again? It's three. So I'm going to overpay. I think it's out of my hand. Okay, is there anything else I want to do? This is free. Zero cost. So I'm going to go ahead and pay that. Play that onto the ship. Put it down here. Now it's subtype. It is a weapon. And I can only have one weapon. Okay. But... It is there. And then we got surgical intervention. But I have to have a medical character, but I do have a medical character. But see, in this case, it doesn't do me any good to play it because I'm not gonna get any wounds. Um, but I can use it to move a character from my discard pile into my hand or into play. So that character I discarded earlier for payment that may be good because it may come out to me later. So, all right. So, uh, so I'm gonna stop for now. Okay. So that is the end of procurement phase. Phase. I have my tableau being built here. All right. So we're now in the action phase. And action phase means I can take various actions that say action phase on it. Right. So in the action phase, I could exhaust him to restore all health. Uh, the reaction phase is a reaction. I can, I believe that means a reaction. No, use. It's a use. But it's during the action phase. I can use this to inflict one wound on a target. But I'm not going to need that. Um, yeah, so that's it. There's no action I want to take this turn. So next is resource phase. We collect our resource tokens. So that's where these guys come in handy. Starting with a ship, I'm going to get a cargo. And these all just go into a common pool unless they say otherwise. So I've got a cargo container. Now, one thing about the, the tokens is they're double-sided, right? So that's the cargo passenger, all right? So you have to be careful how you set them down. You can't just toss them around. So I am getting the cargo, but then I'm also getting a cargo container. Right, so I'll put that there. Now, these either ors can be either or. Okay. Then, so that's all I get for my ship capabilities. I have no attachments that give me anything else. So then here I will get a medical, uh, uh, expert medical token. And this is also odd. These are also double-sided. So here's the medical token. You gotta make sure you get it the right way because on this side it's expert, on this side it's trained. And you wanna make sure you have the one you're supposed to get. So in this case, you get an expert. And then because he has this weapon and he is attached to him, he will get the combat token as well. And that is that is only trained. So we'll only get the trained token for that. So we come over here. And we find the combat, which is right here. And we receive it. We make sure we flip it over. So it is trained. All right, so those are a resource. And we do victory check. There is no victory so far. Now the resolution phase. So we are committed to here. So the first step right, is to reveal uh, all unrevealed um, complications. So we reveal that. And we're on this one. So it's an unexpected booking. So see, this is not good. Because what happens here is to do that, to beat that, I have to have a passenger token. Okay? And I can't get to this until I can get to this. So I'm going to have to, to knock that out, I'm going to have to use my passenger token. So I'm gonna take that and spend it. And I'll put it back in the, in the box. And then we take this and just move it to the discard pile. To the discard pile right there. Okay, so now we have that. 
but it has no complications on it, but there's nothing we can do because I have three, I need three cargo and I only have available to me one cargo. I do have this card, right? To add a basic capability token to your resource pool, but that won't do me good. I could take another uh, cargo capability token, but unfortunately I cannot um, get three and these all get discarded at the end of the turn. So we are done. There's no failure. I'm still committed to this, this mission, this contract. So nothing bad happened. I just, it's going to get a contract added to it in a minute, I bet. And the last phase is, so each of, we would, if we're playing two player, we would each try to resolve or like I could resolve a complication. The opponent could, if they're on the, committed to the same uh, contract could resolve that com another complication. And then if you're still on this, uh, you're eligible to then try to, to resolve this and you can each fulfill a contract uh, if you got that far. So uh, we are done. That is the end of round one. Uh, you draw up at the beginning of the next round. So um, the only thing I gotta do here is discard my tokens. I kind of keep them off to the side because I know I'm gonna be reusing those a lot. And, uh, and then after that, we will next play round two. So thanks for watching. God bless you. Come back and watch the next phase. Bye-bye. Oh!